Thank you to the IMF for the opportunity to share some of the results of our study on talquetamab, a GPRC 5D CD3 bispecific antibody that is used in the treatment of relapsed refractory myeloma. First, a little bit about talquetamab. So everyone is probably familiar with CD38. It's a target for isatuximab, daratumumab. People are also familiar with BCMA, a target for CAR T cells, and a target for some um, antibody drug conjugates such as belantamab. But you may be less familiar with GPRC 5D. But it too is a receptor highly expressed on malignant plasma cells. It's also expressed on keratinized tissue, which as you'll see in a little bit, is the reason for some of the adverse events that we do see with it. Now, it, the study I presented looked at two doses of talcretamab and two schedules. So one of them was a 405 micrograms per kilo subcutaneous weekly, and the other was 800 micrograms per kilo every two weeks. Both doses used uh, what was called the step-up dosing, and this is pretty common with many of the bispecifics. So several small doses before the first full dose as a way to reduce the risk of cytokine release syndrome. The other important thing to notice is that usually we give pre-medications as in this study with the priming doses and with the first full dose. But after that, pre-medication isn't required if patients uh, aren't having any uh, adverse reactions. So that means that the use of steroids is much less with many of these regimens such as this one. Now, the patients that entered into this study were quite heavily pretreated with a median of up to six prior regimens, uh, and about a quarter of them had had different kinds of BCMA targeting therapy, and about a quarter were pentadrug refractory, so a pretty challenging um, disease status to, for, for patients. And you can look in terms of the safety profile that overall talcretamide was, was tolerable. We did see hematologic toxicity, neutropenia, so low white blood cell counts, and thrombocytopenia, low platelets. Um, but that's not surprising given that many of these patients had had a lot of previous therapies. But the cytopenias tended to be with the priming dose and the first two cycles and really didn't appear to be prolonged or to... Um, lead us to limits in terms of, of uh, subsequent dosing. Now let's talk about the non-hematologic side effects. And here we saw cytokine release, and that's very much common with this class of drugs. When you activate T cells, you expect to see cytokine release. Some toxicities that were a little bit more uh, notable uh, were in terms of this skin-related and nail disorders. So I mentioned that uh, gprc 5 is expressed on keratinized tissue, and we did see there for pitting of the nails, and in some cases, people losing fingernails or toenails during the early uh, cycles of, of therapy. Often we saw skin exfoliation, and that tended to be a, a peeling of the skin on the palms or the soles of the feet that was self-limited and we managed with topical therapies. Uh, and then rashes were also seen, though most of them were relatively mild. And again, were able to be managed with topical therapy. There were, there were only four patients that we reported on in this earlier group that had more extensive rashes, but all those patients were also uh, successfully managed with their rash and able to continue on therapy. The other uh, notable adverse event was dysgeusia, so taste changes, and that was at an up to 60% of patients. And those were a variety. Some patients complained of metallic taste. Some patients complained that they couldn't taste sweet or salty foods. So as I said, it varied from patient to patient. I mentioned cytokine release, and you can see that this happened in approximately three quarters of the patients, but it was generally mild, what we call grade one and grade two and limited to about a two-day duration. This is the exciting part of the study was the response rate. So we saw response rates up to 70%. We saw that responses occurred pretty quickly, generally within about a month. 
and we saw re responses were pretty deep. So over 50% of the patients getting a BGPR, meaning a 90% drop in their M protein or better. And we saw responses in people who were pentadrug refractory. Now those are small numbers, only six patients, but 83% of them did respond again, which was pretty exciting um, given that that is a challenging um, biology of disease and group of patients um, to treat. The other question that's been around in terms of bispecifics is how long do these responses last? And you can see here that the responses do appear to be durable. We have patients um, on this swimmer's plot up to now over 18 months on treatment and continuing in complete remission. The other interesting thing to note is that the responses appear to deepen over time. For example, in this patient here, it's at cycle five, the fact that they achieved a complete remission. We have another similar patient here who at cycle six achieved the complete remission. So um, responses durable, deepening over time. And we saw that same idea in the every two week cohort as well, though that follow up for that group of patients is much shorter. So, um, but certainly appears encouraging as well. This is some data just on the pharmacokinetics. The question really being, can you give an every two week dose? Is it comparable to the weekly dose? And we do see that we're able to maintain good drug levels above the exposure that we need to, to maintain consistent activation um, of T cells and also to maintain um, the concentrations we need to, to um, bind to the target. And here is just some data showing that we are able to get T cells activated. And that again is, is a marker of activity of the drug because that's again, part of the reason why this drug works is the T cell activation. So in conclusion, what we saw from this study was that telquetabeb um, appears tolerable in patients who have had heavily pretreated myeloma. We have a weekly dosing and a, every two week dosing and both appear comparable in terms of efficacy and safety. We see that the responses were durable and appear to deepen over time and very encouraging with 60 to 70% overall response rate, including patients who were had refractory myeloma. There's a study ongoing right now uh, looking at telquetamib in a larger group of patients at both the weekly and every two week dosing schedule. And there's also a study going on looking at it in combination with some of the already approved myeloma therapies such as daratumumab. And I, and I wanted to, to just end our talk by again, acknowledging all of the patients who participated in this trial. We understand how much of a commitment being on a clinical trial is and how um, important it, your, your um, participation is, not just for yourself, but also for other patients as these new therapies um, are studied. And also the caregivers who again also have played such a huge role in helping uh, participation in studies and also our research nurses, our research assistants who are just a terrific part of our study teams. Thank you.